Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me at the moment in a Range Rover with my friend Jay and we're heading actually to a dealership to go and pick up a car for Tavares for Freddy. So I'm down here in Miami, Fort Lauderdale and we're going to be heading up to Orlando. Now this has all been pretty top secret but of course at this moment in time you might know that the car in question is an Aston Martin V12 Vantage S. Well this is of course during my time out here but we've had to keep it back for the time being but let's head to the dealership now, go and collect this car, drive for about three or four hours to get up to Freddy's place with his new Aston Martin. Now this is a little bit funny of course because it's kind of already happened. I know that. This is while I'm out here in Florida. I've been in Miami. Today I was going to fly to get to Orlando. It's a couple of hours drive, well maybe three or four. I figured though, given the timing of this, when Freddie told me that he had a car to collect from Fort Lauderdale to bring up to Orlando, it was a no-brainer that I would go and get it for him and drive his new car before he has to get it back to his place. So pretty cool he's been happy to invite me. And I think we are just about to arrive actually at the dealership just over here where we will be able to see this car, I think it's somewhere around the back. We'll be able to come and have a look at it. He's not actually been, I don't think, to see this car at all. So I am literally seeing his new car before he is. And um, yes, it is over here. I can see it, I can see it. It is waiting over to the left. The black Aston Martin V12 Vantage S we're going to be picking up today. It has the paddle shift gearbox, but a six litre naturally aspirated V12. This thing, look at that, all blacked out, looks awesome. Well, thank you very much for the ride, Jay. You're very welcome. Appreciate it. Been getting around in my- Safe my travels. Hammy. Yes, in this, in this. Well, let's go and have a quick look at it. And take this in for the moment. Oh, look, we've got a wide body GTR over that away. This is Mr. Tavares' new Aston Martin V12 Vantage S. Black wheels, black paintwork, red calipers. And have a look at the interior of it as well while we're here. I think it should be open. Yeah, here we go. Black leather, red accents on the door. Not quite sure what that was that just went past. Nice, nice. Now, this is all part of a big challenge. The guys are all doing a competition to do with the price of the car. It has to cost the same amount as a new Corvette C8. This, I believe, was about $70,000, so right on target. And um, well, I'm the one who's now going to enjoy the sound of this while we head on the roads, the long highway journey up towards um, Freddy's garage. So. Here it is. The sun is now setting, so most of the drive ahead is going to be in the dark, but the paperwork is now all done. The car is ready for the journey ahead. And to be honest, I can't wait to get back again behind the wheel of an Aston Martin with this engine, the six liter naturally aspirated V12. Of course, it's the same engine that was in my Vanquish when I owned my Vanquish Volante a few years ago, also in my dad's V12 Vantage when he had it. But basically Aston took their V8 Vantage of the time, which originally had a 4.3 V8, then they upgraded it to a 4.7 V8, so their smallest car, and stuck in the biggest engine from the DB9, the six litre naturally aspirated V12, which while we're talking about, we should definitely come and take a look at it, because it is a work of art inside the engine bay up front. So just down here on the driver's side, we will find the catch in the footwell, release that so that we can come round. Of course, now they've become the 5.2 twin turbos in the DB11, but inside this, if we just release this, take a look. It is magnificent to behold, a gigantic engine for the size of the car. You get the plaques which say who did your final inspection, and then you have a six liter V12 lump making over 500 horsepower and a phenomenal sound while it is at it. Clicked into place, yeah, we are secure. And also while we're here, by the way, check that out, that satin white Nissan GTR with the wide body kit. Not quite sure what that is exactly or what power it might be making, but it looks mean nonetheless. And then we come back over to this, one of the most beautiful cars, if you ask me. Of course, I'm biased with the GT8 that I have in my garage, but that's with the V8, not with the V12. So this is quite a different driving experience. Anyway, let's hop on board, take a seat inside here. I'm gonna grab the ECU, the emotional control unit, the glass crystal key that you have for the car. Take a seat inside. No third pedal in this one, but foot on the brake. Let's start it back up. Into life it goes. I will press the sport button for extra noise. Yes, there will be a lot of that. So let's get ready then, make sure we have some fun. Probably need to close the door so that we don't have a warning on the dashboard and get this journey underway. I should just say a quick thanks to Freddy for the opportunity to take this car for a first drive. In a way, it kind of feels like collecting my own car for the first time. We have the fly-off handbrake down there to the side on the left, which is kind of unusual. Um, put the car into gear either by pressing the paddle or pressing D in the middle, depending if you want it to stay in manual or auto. And then, uh, well, let's get on the road. Let's get this drive started already. 
with that grumble in the background, the door's locking. Yes, listen to that. That is the best thing about this car, the noise that you get out of that engine. Now we need to be very careful of this dip coming out of the site. It is a rather low pavement here. In fact, I need to be super, super, super careful. We've also got a lot of traffic. I think this evening might have a fair bit of traffic ahead, unfortunately, but I will do the best I can. Obviously, I'm not in control of what the traffic is going to do in front of me. Somebody has very kindly let me out. Thank you, sir. So, here we go. Yes. That noise. That's what this engine does. It's not a screamy V12 like you find in the Ferraris, for example. It's quite a lazy engine overall. It likes to just idle along. It's very, very torquey. In fact, in the manual cars, you can pull all the way pretty much in top gear from not moving very quickly. Now, this gearbox was never exactly the greatest. It requires you to be quite patient, it doesn't happen instantly, and you need to fluctuate the throttle to match with it. Like that era of the Ferrari F1 gearboxes, the Audi R-Tronic, the Lamborghini E-Gear, the various different options where they had this kind of technology that, well, it wasn't really up to the standards of the dual clutches that we have in cars now. But in this, at least, if you know what you're doing, you get to enjoy a little bit of driver involvement, much more driver involvement than you would have you know, if you were literally driving in an automatic car, but obviously a little bit less than in a manual with a shifter. In any case, I can see why Freddie's gone for this, because overall package-wise, for the money, for the money, and that's a very relevant topic to this discussion, this car offers so much, so, so, so much. You can pull both paddles, put it into neutral. Yeah, I'm just gonna come to a stop safely first, but. It's silly. It just sounds silly. Anyway, we've got a long way on the road ahead. I'm gonna be in comfort inside here. Nice and chilled, electric seats, all the window controls, mirror controls. I'm just gonna shuffle that actually ever so slightly up a little bit more while I'm sitting in here. Might as well make myself comfortable. And yeah, cruise on up. We will go, what is it, on the nav? 230 miles, a long, long, long old journey. I need to put some fuel in the tank on the way up and we will deliver this car up to its new owner. The thing with driving in the USA is that you have all of these gigantic intersections where the traffic lights are red for a very, very long time. The only advantage of red traffic lights is that you do get to put your foot down and accelerate away from them when you're on a slightly faster road. But unfortunately, it does mean you kind of have to wait here and wait here. And there we go, we've got a green. And then we can listen to this. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna be joining the highway here. I think, yeah. Yeah, so I turned on my navigation just so I make sure I'm going exactly the right way from here. Fast forward a touch. I am now something like two and a half hours into the drive. One hour to go, except I'm going to stop to have a quick bite to eat. This car, though, under the nightlight, looks super, super stealthy. It has to be said. The paintwork is really, really nice. I'm not normally the biggest fan of black cars, but there's something about the look of an Aston in any colour always looking fantastic. This particular car, this shape, just seems to work with whatever you do. Anyway, it's a very, very comfortable drive. It is a very, very gentle Grand Touring Cruiser. And that's always been, well, I guess, kind of the thing with the Vantage. It's a sports car, but it's also pretty comfortable when you are cruising. The seats are good. It's got the Bang & Olufsen sound system, which sounds amazing. I've just got radio playing, I've got country music playing, getting with the theme given I'm over here in the US. And yeah, good times so far. We've got about an hour to go. It's obviously pretty late at night. Freddie is waiting at the other end when I do get there to catch up, to hand over, and I guess kind of deliver his new car to him when we get to the other end. So inside, bite to eat, back on the road. Let's get there, let's get this done. And here we are then. Hey, <laughs> delivering the car into the workshop. Oh yeah. We made it. Nice. <laughs> Let me just get this parked up so that I can jump outside and say hello to Freddy with his car that has been delivered here by me. So, let's hop on out then. We made it. How are you? Wow. <laughs> hey, how are you? All good, good to see you. Well, uh, I'm, I'm so glad that you came and brought me my car. Literally, it's wow. been, been Schmee delivered straight, straight to your workshop. 
I suppose technically at this point I should actually give you the key. This is yours after all. Is this the emotional control this unit? This is indeed. Congratulations. Oh, okay. Somebody somebody has dropped it. I, I'm assuming it's, it wasn't you. No, it wasn't me. It wasn't <laughs> me. Oh well, oh well. You own a beautiful British Aston Martin. This is crazy. So I used to own one of these. Did you actually? Um, not, not a V12, just a V8. One of the early ones. Yeah, uh, 4.3? 4.3, yeah. 4.3 nice. manual. I loved it. And uh, I always wanted to get a V12, but I've, I've never actually like... I've never even seen one really in the flesh. It's, it's always been very elusive to me. Man, yeah, because this, this it's obviously like the slightly facelift. It has the updated interior and stuff yeah, versus yeah, your yeah. old 4.3. So they also made one, this is a 2015. They also made one in like a 2017, which is a seven speed dog leg, right? Yes, they did, the manual. Wow. I love that like, I've just delivered your new car to you, which you've never seen. You've just seen it driving in, and it's the I first have, time. I have only seen it on pictures. I have not seen this car at all, and this this is nuts. So, wow, these brakes are huge. So these are carbon ceramics. <laughs> You're just like, take it all. I've got a quick question. Why have I brought you an Aston Martin? Good question. <laughs> Good question. Uh, so, me and two other YouTubers are doing a challenge, a cheap exotic car challenge on a show we're basically financing ourselves called Car Trek. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be me, Tyler Hoover, and Ed Bullion from Vinwiki. Cool. So, cool, cool, cool. Uh, this is my entrant into this challenge, and I think I'm gonna win it because this thing is just amazing. This thing is crazy. I can tell you from spending hours behind the wheel, it is a great mix of sports car meets Grand Tourer. Yeah with a V12, the engine is a, is a masterpiece. And actually, um, pop open the engine bay. Yes. We had a, I had a quick look on the video earlier, but it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. I'd like to see that. And I tell you what, is this car in about the best condition you've ever bought a car? You know what, <laughs> I think it probably is. Um, so I've only bought a car from a dealership once, and that was to buy my wife's car, which is a Hyundai Elantra, and it had 180,000 miles on it or something like that, and we bought okay. it for $5,000. And that's right. the only time we bought from a dealership. This is the only other And this time. is probably in better shape, because this is in really, really good shape. Yeah, I mean, it didn't come on the back of a tow truck, so that's, no, that's good. Always fun uh, to find uh, where the catch uh, is. Uh, Push it right. Yeah. It's right in the middle, it's gonna go right. Right, oh, okay. Right. Yeah, always uh -huh. a challenge. It's nice. Wow. That's really nice. Somebody went crazy with the armor all in here. <laughs> 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 this is This is crazy. So, uh, like right off the bat, I'm looking at like, okay, how do I get the spark plugs? And yeah. this entire thing has to come off. But mm, I really like the contrast. I love the white intake manifold. Yeah. This is it's really nice. It's really, really nice. So, uh, to be honest with you, I'm not the biggest fan of black cars. Yeah. Um, the murdered out look, black on black on black on black. Um, what's your favorite color for like an Aston Martin? Ooh. Favorite color for an Aston? Yeah. Aston do really, really nice kind of pearl, yeah. deep color paints. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, a British racing green might be a bit cliche. I like I like BRG, but um, I was thinking like Mako Blue, I really like. I love Mako Blue. Yeah. There's a story there. Uh -huh. Back when I had my V8 Vantage as well in 2010, I got was it. Was that a Volante? I had a V8 Roadster mm -hmm. in, it was called Glacial Blue. Okay. But at the time, shortly after, mm -hmm. as we all do, dreaming about what you get next, because right. everybody dreams about what car they're going to get mm -hmm. next, on the market was advertised a car that nobody was buying, mm -hmm. a DBS Volante in <sighs> Mako Blue. And my goodness, mm -hmm. I just kept, I was glued to that advert every day. Yeah. The, the DBS <laughs> is, it, that's my dream car. Yeah. So I was trying to buy a DBS in this price range and it, it was just done. impossible. No, yeah. yeah, it can't be done. So you guys Sorry. had a fixed upper ceiling, couldn't go over. I, I went over a little bit. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, uh, I, I, well, there, we can, we can I, I cheated reasonably. Let's okay. just say okay. I cheated reasonably. You didn't go like a big five figure sum over. No, 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 no. Okay. This was, this was reasonable within the rules. I think I did uh -huh. all right. But um, also the, uh, the challenge was that the cars had to be mid-engine. Uh, so, oh, oh. So, well, here's the thing. Here's, here's my, my entire argument. Uh, the front cars are here. Most of the cylinders and stuff is like back here. Mm -hmm. So, and it's 50-50 weight distribution, probably. Yeah. And uh, that's... <laughs> is the weight balance of the engine in this? It must be front mid. Is uh, it front mid? I, I'm, I'm guessing it is just because it's so far back. I the know normal that the V8 the... is. Okay. So, Maybe. It's about there. Yeah. It's there enough that you can say it is. 
I can argue this, and that's all I need to do. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I don't have to be right. I just have to prove everybody else wrong. <laughs> for sure, for sure. While we're here, though, you have to sit in your new car. Oh yeah. I think you've yeah. got to you've got to take a seat and see how it whether it fits you. Okay. He says, well, I click in the front down. Oh, there we go. Nope. I failed. I failed to close Jesus. it. Just take it back. That's it. Return it. There. There we go. go. So I I know I fit in this car because this was the V8 was my daily driver for mm -hmm. a while. It's really nice in here. It is, isn't it? It is so nice in here. Do you know what? Knowing what this cost, are you saying what it cost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this was uh, 69,000 uh, US. This was the cheapest one in the country. It is insane that you have just bought a very nice V12 Aston for yeah, that price. And uh, for the life of me, I, I don't know why this is so cheap. I, I'm like, okay, the engine's gonna explode or something's gonna <laughs> leak. Or it has some weird history, but no, like it has clean uh, Carfax, clean title, hasn't been in any accidents. It has a little bit uh, of a higher mileage, has 32,000 miles. It's not lots though. That's nothing. And I can tell you from sitting 231 miles behind the wheel of this today, it has done the job completely perfectly. Well, but. I mean, the, the flappy paddles, they're not exactly the, 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 the greatest, but um, that's, you know, I'm, I'm just splitting hairs here. It's, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, um, you get used to it. I think I think I'm probably gonna end up uh, converting it to manual. Uh, okay. Yeah, because I, from what research I've done, the V8, uh, the the manual shift can be put into this car. The transmission really? and everything is the same. So you can yeah. take a V8 manual. Well, the sport shift is an automated manual, yes, right? Yes. Yes. So this seven speed is essentially the same seven speed that's a dog leg with some modification. Mm -hmm. um, and Graziano will actually like if you send them this um, transmission, they'll convert it to a uh, manual for you. But then you have to get all the bits and pieces and you yeah, have to do yeah. electronics and stuff. Yeah. But I mean, it's possible. It's definitely possible. So okay. it's either a seven speed or a six speed. Um, I'm gonna just see how good this is. This this is crazy. I mean, like, I can't believe this is my car. I'm, I'm just thinking like you're <laughs> you're here in a rental or you're just, yeah, you're, yeah. You know, hey, nice car for me. Like I, I don't Yeah, <laughs> I don't just turn know, up. Man. No, give it to you. I've actually, in my pocket, I've got the valet key as well. That's oh, yours valet too. valet key, so yeah. this is. You get the glass key, which is your fancy one. And you get the valet key, which is kind of a cheap Volvo key. Wow, okay. Well, it's from that era. Nice. <laughs> well, that's, that's good. I mean, this is also a proper hatchback. It so, is, there's a decent it, amount of storage. Yeah. I've, got, I've got my case in here, of course, given that I am currently traveling around the US. Oh yeah, that's, that's totally fine. So when I first had my V8, um, my dad and I, we uh, drove down from New Jersey uh, down here to Florida and we had two carry-ons, we had all our luggage, yeah. and it was, it was fine. Yeah, it was, you can fit a surprising amount because you've got mm -hmm. the rear shelf. Yeah, you could, take this, you could take this partial shelf out, yeah. This car, this generation of the Vantage the, for Aston Martin is such a wonderful thing. Yeah. It's su such a good-looking car. The engine is a work of art. I, I think that they, they got this so right. And to be honest, I don't really like the new direction Aston Martin has headed. Uh, like the uh, DB11 doesn't look as good as the older cars. The DBS Superleggera looks really good. Though. Yes, agreed. Yeah, that, that car looks really good. But everything else is just kind of like, eh. Like this, actually, I like the V12, but I sort of like the the, the clean lines of the V8. Like the, okay. the original V8 or like the original DB9, it looks just timeless. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this, you can make an argument that there's just like a lot of stuff kind of like, you know, glued on. Mm, places, it's a but, bit fussier. Yeah. But it's it's aggressive and it's feminine and it's masculine and it does all this stuff and I'm so happy. Ah, it's, it's, it, this is awesome. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Epic car. Thank you for letting me drive it down. Thank Just you for driving it down. Handshake. Dude, Hand of the car. So car is yours. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed it. Well, this has been a long drive, a long, long old day. Congratulations again. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> it's a pleasure, absolute pleasure, believe me. Um, hopefully all has gone well with the car in the challenges, which no doubt is- I don't see any leaks, yeah. <laughs> so life is good. No doubt all of that stuff is actually up now as well, so yes. everyone can go and check it out. Mm -hmm. It's a bit strange that this has kind of been secret from- For a while, yeah. Today yeah. until yeah. when the video goes live, but I'm sure you can understand why when you know what the car is actually for. Mm -hmm. But today's been good fun. Yes. Great to be back here with you. You've probably seen some things already that we might have also shot, but not yet. Yeah. It's all confusing in this world. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's, it's all cars. It's all fun. Indeed. Indeed. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you again very soon. Cheers. <laughs>